Hello, and welcome to Coding with Kriller. Today we are going to be discussing a concept that will completely revolutionize your coding experience. Serial printing on the serial monitor. With the power of serial printing, you will be able to finally build a user interface into your programs. And with the power of serial input, you will be able to allow your users to interact with your programs. We've spent a lot of time learning the basics of coding. Now it's time to start having some fun. Even though we will be sending serial data between the computer and the Teensy and looking at it on a serial monitor, we will be using the USB micro ribbon cable for communication instead of a serial port. To get started, make sure that you have everything plugged in and ready to communicate. Now it's time to write a bit of code. When you are coding a sketch that makes use of the serial monitor and serial printing, you will need to establish communication first. The serial begin function sets up communication at 9600 baud, which basically means that the Teensy gets ready to talk with the computer. The delay command makes sure that the Teensy has enough time to set up communication before the program moves on. After you've written this code, check to make sure that your USB type and port are set to the correct settings. Now that everything is set up, let's start serial printing. The foundation of all serial printing are these two commands. Technically, there is a third one called SNPrintf, which is very useful for printing numbers with scientific notation, but that one annoys me because it's pretty complicated, so I'm not going to talk about it in this video. What these two commands do is print the data inside of them to the serial window. The most basic way to do this is to put a message inside quotation marks, and then put it in the parentheses. Then, when you upload the code and open the serial window, anything inside either command will be printed, with the serial.println command also printing down to another line. This command is usually the best one to use because it makes the code much easier to read. While printing messages may be fun, printing data to the serial monitor is much more important. This allows you to see the data any of your mathematical equations spit out. To do this, we use something called concatenation, which ties different pieces of data together. Because the serial print commands can only print strings, we need to cast any numeric data as a string before printing it. Then, we use plus signs to tell the processor to stitch together the newly cast string with the rest of the message, so that when it prints, it comes out looking natural. One final thing to know about serial printing is how to print tabs, new lines, quotes, and backslashes. Tabs and new lines are relatively simple. Just a backslash and then a T for tab or N for a new line. Things get a bit more complicated with quotes though. Because putting quotes around something makes it a string, we can't just put quotes inside quotes or we will make two strings containing nothing and a bunch of data the compiler has no idea what to do with in between. To avoid this, when printing quotation marks, put a backslash before them to make sure the compiler doesn't get confused. Finally, we have printing backslashes. Because backslashes are used to signify that something special is being printed, the compiler doesn't quite know what to do if it's just the backslash itself you want to print. Luckily, there is a solution. More backslashes. Just write twice as many backslashes as you want printed, and the compiler will print one backslash for each pair. Now that you know how to print stuff to the screen, it's time to start doing some more complicated coding. Reading inputs instead of outputs. Reading inputs requires code with a lot of loops and switch case logic statements, something that you haven't learned yet. Because of this, we won't code our own input functions. Instead, going to Chris Odom's website and downloading it. I've put a link in the description so that you can find it yourself. Once you've downloaded it, put it in its own sketch without the setup or loop function. It may look like some of the code has strangely been commented out, but that should only be uncommented for debugging, so keep it as it is for now. Save this sketch and name it SKIF for Serial Keyboard Input Function. This sketch won't work, but that's fine. We're not running it as a standalone sketch. We're running it as a module. Modular programming is a great way to keep your code organized. Basically, you fill up a sketch with a collection of functions that you'll need to use from time to time. When you need to use them, you simply tack them onto a functioning sketch, 
allowing the main sketch to access the functions in the module. To do this, go to the menu bar in Arduino, then select Sketch, and then select Add File. On the window that pops up, navigate to wherever you saved the SCIF sketch or any other module you've made in your computer and click Open. This should open another tab in your sketch allowing the first tab to call any function it wants from the second one. If you want to add more modules, you can repeat the previous process or you can click the little downward facing arrow and press New Tab and make a new module from inside your sketch. To delete any module from your sketch, you can simply click on it, then click the little downward facing arrow, and then click delete. Be careful though, because this will delete the module forever. That said, if, like SCIF, you made the module in a different part of your computer and then imported it through the sketch and add file tab, what you delete will be a copy and the main one will remain unharmed. Now that you know how to use modules, you should be able to create your own for use in a variety of sketches or code with your friends by assigning one module to each person and combining them to form one large and complicated sketch at the end. To fully unlock the power of the serial monitor, import the SCIF module into whatever sketch you will be using to experiment with serial printing, giving the sketch access to all of the SCIF functions. It's now time to learn about how the functions themselves work. To do that, let's take a quick look at buffers. When you enter data into the serial monitor, by typing it into the bar and pressing enter or hitting send, the data gets sent to a buffer. This is a storage space for the data, like a variable that can't be manipulated. To work with the data, you need to take it out of the buffer and put it in some of your own variables that can be manipulated by the code. To do this, set your variable equal to the relevant function. If you expect your user to enter a number, use readInt or readFloat. If you expect them to enter a name or message, use readString. When the function is called, it will wait until there is something in the serial buffer and then take the data out piece by piece, stitch it back together, and stick it in your variable. The data in the buffer gets deleted as your variables full up, so the buffer is ready to accept any more data that is sent its way. With that out of the way, you're ready to go. I may explain the inner workings of the skiff function after I cover loops and switch case logic statements, but until then, you can just treat it like some magical artifact that takes data from the buffer and gives it to your code. With this tool at your hands, the things you can code greatly increase. For example, remember when I talked about some function finding how much you weigh on Pluto? Try printing a message asking the user their weight, take that data and run it through a non-void function that uses math to convert Earth weight into Pluto weight, and then use concatenation to display the data in an easy to read way. Or make a Mad Libs game that asks the user for a bunch of nouns, verbs, adjectives, and other words, and then uses concatenation to spit out a funny story. Heck, combine what you've learned this lesson with the LED on pin 13 by asking the user how many seconds they want it to delay for. With the Serial Monitor and SCIF module, you can now code way more than before. And with loops and logic coming up, you'll soon be able to code even more still.